quit you, okay? Yeah, man, but look, B. Once we get my little brother back, man, we right back on, baby. We right on once I get Sunny. It's gonna be business. <laughs> <laughs> He got into the van right here, and once he got into the van, I locked. I knew I had to lock. I locked the doors, and as as I, as I was pulling off, I was asking him because it didn't take long after I pulled off. I was asking him like, "Yo, Rich, where did you get that coat from, man? That that shit was good because I wanted to make him comfortable. That shit was good as a motherfucker." He's like, "I got it from my connect." I said, "Oh yeah." Turned to my little man. I gave him the nod. Once I gave him the knob, my little man spent, because he was short so he could stand up in the van. Next thing you heard was the two gunshots. Bang, bang. Richard slumped over. And it happened. It happened right here. At this light. At this light, it happened. I'm saying, to, in my mind, I'm saying to my little man, yo, he's dead. He's done it. He just got hit with a 357. Twice. The, the only... Once, once I pulled over, my little man, he's probably about, Gary's probably like five, three, one something, so I'm trying to, he couldn't, he couldn't pick him up. He couldn't pick him up, Rich was bigger than him, so he couldn't, he couldn't move him to, to, to put him in the woods and all that. So now I gotta get, I had to get out the van to go help him. And when I went to go help him, I had to pick him up. in the woods and leave his body. I was able to, you know, get him where he needed to be. And then we jumped back in the we jumped back in the van and I made sure I didn't skid off or anything like that to leave any kind of tracks. Just as far as we was, I knew a lot of his business, I knew his family. He knew my family in DC and in New York. You know, I knew his son's mother, I knew where he laid his head. He knew where I laid my head sometimes. You know, I knew some of his stashes, he knew some of my stashes. We became real close. So and he was also the one with me with Rich. Okay. So we had a lot of secrets on one another. He called my wife a bitch. He called my wife a bitch because he was like, man, are you still with that crazy bitch? And I just looked over at him. And I could have took it a little better if it was just me and him. But his one of his workers was there. Right. And I kind of like gave him that look like, yo, you really disrespected me right now. And, and my man Wayne heard him say this. It was like, yo, Gary was down here talking trash about you and uh, disrespected your wife. I was going to kill him right there, but I said, let me get with you first. Because I was like, no, I still got love for the kid. No, he's just, he's just frustrated right now. And we had a lot of secrets on one another. And I always told them before this happened, I said, you know, we know so much about one another that if we was to ever get into any type of confusion or anything, one of us would have to leave. And I'm definitely not going back to New York because I'm getting money. <laughs> so the only thing else is one of us will have to die. You know that? Same person that he's telling, they know my man, Wayne. My man Wayne, he get to me, he said, yo, you about to put a deal together in New York for this, 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 that, and gonna put gas. I said, what the hell? I said, how you know? He said, oh man, my man called me down from law and he said, Gary told him that, yo, that you wanna put this deal together and it ain't gonna go, you know, he gonna wind up doing you in the process. Just how much anger he built up for me. So I said, oh yeah, so I'm there, I was like, yo, let's, I said, no, we got to do this right now. Can't just be running up on Gary in broad daylight, that's gonna come back to us. And uh, so uh, so he beats me one night and said, yo, kid, kid, one of the kids' name was Jawbreaker, out of D.C., the kid named Jawbreaker. He said, yo, yo, I know where Jawbreaker and them at, this is Gary talking to us on the phone, like, yo, I know where the kid Jawbreaker and them at, they had such and such, such and such. I said, oh yeah, I, so I'm talking to him on the phone, I said, who you with? He said, yo, I'm by myself. I said, you, you got something? He said, yeah, I got, I got me, uh, I got two pistols with me now. I said, all right, I was, I was with my man Wayne and like two other dudes that were under my man Wayne. So we go get him. Boom. So we go get him. He gets into the MPV van. He parks his car, whatever. He parks his truck. He had the truck at the time. He parks his truck. I met him on, uh, what's that, uh, Florida Avenue. I go meet him on Florida Avenue. Florida Avenue by a, a, a Wendy's, I think it was. Okay. We get a little revolver out mm -hmm. of the out the stash, and I give it to the dudes that's sitting in back of my man Gary. So my man Gary, he's in the middle, but he don't know that we don't slip the revolver to the back to the kid who's gonna hit him in the head. Mm -hmm. We ran for about five, ten minutes after we get the gas. Bang, my man hit him. 
I give the signal through the rear view mirror. My man hit him with the revolver, two in the head. All you hear is, Ugh. He was one of the city's most notorious drug dealers, famous since the 1980s for his murderous ways and mountains of cash and drugs, immortalized in dozens of rap songs and the movie paid in full. The RPD is investigating the deadly shooting of a reputed drug kingpin in Harlem. Video shows officers near the scene at West 147th Street and Frederick Douglass Boulevard early Sunday morning. Police say 55-year-old Alberto Alpo Martinez was shot multiple times while sitting in the driver's seat of a Dodge Ram. Reports say Martinez had run a cocaine empire in New York in the 80s. On Sunday, about 3.20 a.m., police were called to Frederick Douglass Boulevard near West 147th Street. A dark red pickup truck crashed into parked cars. The driver was shot five times in the chest through the car window and killed. Police have arrested a man they say murdered former Harlem drug lord Albert Alpo Martinez. Cops arrested Shaquem Parker. He's 27 years old. He was already being held on Rikers Island in a gun case. Police say he also has priors for burglary, robbery, and drug possession. Mr. Martinez was gunned down in October of last year on the car on West 156th Alpo had been given a new identity when he was released from a Colorado Supermax prison in 2015 after serving more than 20 years for 14 murders. Another day on Keep It G News. And there y'all, we got to talk about Elpo Martinez, man. Most people know Elpo from Cameron and him being, him playing in page and four. But Elpo Martinez was a real person. The turned rat. They say he was rumored to allege that killed 14 people. And that's why I played some of them clips for y'all in the beginning for the people that don't know who he is. But he was a famous snitch. Made a movie about him. The movie did pretty well. It was actually more but a hood classic. <laughs> Paid in Full probably was one of the best movies, you know, that ever came out back then. You know, Cameron did a real good job with his role. I even think that role got Cameron shot in D.C. <laughs> you feel me? Because Elpo Martinez, though he was a Harlem drug dealer, he went to D.C., got money in D.C., and this is around the time when New Yorkers was going everywhere. We even had some in Baltimore. It was a Baltimore-New York war at one time when a lot of the guys from New York was getting killed in Baltimore, and I'm sure that probably was happening in D.C., but Elpo Martinez capitalized and rose to superstardom, money-wise, in that time. And when he got caught and got arrested, he decided to tell on people from D.C. He didn't tell on anybody from Harlem. So, when he came home, I think he thought that he would still be able to come to Harlem, you know, because I ain't telling on nobody here, even though he killed him. Rich Porter, who was a close friend of him, and that's what the movie paid for. Yo, what you want to around Rich Porter and AZ and Elpo. And this goes into what I always tell y'all about snitches, yo. Snitches are some of the worst people to be around. I'm talking about guys that proclaim the streets and then end up being rat. They normally are the same people that have backstabbed their homeboy. And this is two situations that I showed y'all with Big Head Gary and Rich Porter, where Elpo murdered him. But guess what happened in court today? Or a couple days ago. The alleged murderer of Elpo was found not guilty. He beat the case. He beat the case. Now in the movie paid him for, it ends with Elpo saying that. I'm not going to give anybody up from Harlem. But this is the real ending of the whole situation. Elpo was alleged murdered. Some people think he's still living. I'm going to keep it all the way real. I ain't got no Doug in that fight. I don't know anything about that. But I'm saying... And heard some rumors of people thinking that he's still living. But the guy that was arrested for is a guy by the name of Shaquane. And he ended up beating the case. And it's not making world news. It's not even a whole bunch of details even coming out about the case. They locked him up during that time. He was already incarcerated. But shit. Salute to him, man, for getting out this situation, man. He was facing life in prison if convicted. 
And they're talking about murdering a federal witness. <laughs> I mean, that's not no easy task. Now, at the time when Elpo was murdered, a lot of people thought it was because of the snitching. But they say it was some road rage activity. They said they ain't like the way that he was riding through on his bike. I don't know what the truth is, you know, because the details ain't came out at court. But I'm going to keep an eye on this case, and I'm going to pay attention to all details, and I'm going to give them to y'all when they're available. Well, I know how y'all feel about this in the comments. This is another day at G News. In hey, what's up guys so uh this is where the notorious harlem drug dealer apple martinez nigga can't do what i do y'all niggas can't copy me let's keep shit g let's keep shit g let's keep the shit g let's keep shit g let's keep shit g